Major key alert right here. Chicken. <laughs> Hot sauce, you wuss. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Joey Fatone. Yeah. He plays Angelo in My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. That's right. He's a shotgun wielding sheriff blowing off zombies' heads <laughs> in Dead in 7. Dead seven. <laughs> Welcome yep. to the show. Man. Thank you, sir. I've uh, I've seen much about this and heard so much about this. Are you excited? How you I'm feeling excited. I'm a little nervous, and then I also my eyes are a little bit tearing, a little bit even just even from smelling some of it. And we have to acknowledge it. Joey's coming off a cleanse, and we're going <laughs> naked chicken tenders. Yeah, I was gonna do the I was gonna do the naked wings or something. I'm literally going off a cleanse, and I can add chicken now. First, it was fruits and vegetables, so I can do this now. But. I don't even know what it's gonna to do to my stomach as far as the sauce, so it's gonna be fun. It might not be fun, but right. let's get it going. <laughs> All right, man, are you ready for this first one? Sure. We're going with sriracha. Sriracha. Not that bad. I've had Free it. throw. I like it. And you're a food guy. I yeah. like when food guys are on the show. Yeah, with like, foe, you foe, you put a lot of I put a lot of sriracha in there. So you were quoted once as saying you have an iron stomach. I do? Yeah. So, Maybe I lied. We'll see. You went to Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando. I did. And I'm sure you know this, but I was pretty surprised to learn how many famous alumni that school had yeah. in just this like four to five year window. <laughs> and I want to make sure I get everybody because right, there's sure. you. Yep. You have Eddie Huang. Mm-hmm. AJ Pierzynski. Yes. Wayne Brady. Correct. Uh, Johnny Damon. Yep. And then DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled was in the same years, but yeah. All I heard walking... he was here. Yeah, I heard he was on here. He only got to two or three. Yes. What a wuss. <laughs> All these guys walk in the halls at yeah. the same time. Yeah. I wonder, did you guys ever cross paths? Were you friends with anybody? Yeah. Do you have no, any uh, stories? AJ, AJ Brzezinski was in was in my class, was in one of my classes. Uh, Khaled was in, was in, I think, two of my classes, in one of my classes as well. You had two classes with DJ Khaled? Was he just yeah. interrupting AP uh, Calculus you know with what's some funny? cloth talk? I mean, what's even funny about Khaled is people like look like, oh, he's from the hood, he's from this. His family owned a, a store called Merry Go Round in the Florida Mall. I mean, he had, not that he was rich, but he had money. All I know it, people are like, oh, you know, DJ Khaled, DJ Khaled. I'm like, what else is DJ? I'm like, oh, Jesus, I know the kid from high school. And his name was Khaled Khaled, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. Tough to go through high school. Yeah, with exactly. Name like that. <laughs> All right. Ready for number two? Sure. All right, so this one is Tapatio. Again, not all that that's big a deal. Yeah, that's not a big deal. So, about a year ago, Above Average published this open letter from Joey Fatone. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't actually by Joey Fatone, nope. but as is often the case with satirical articles online, mm -hmm. everybody thought new that it was written by Joey Fatone, yep. and there were some shots at One Direction, <laughs> and I don't know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a One Direction fan wrath, um, but I imagine that they're ruthless and that it was You tough. know what was funny is, it was more, I did something one time where I said, it was the Huff Post or whatever, and I said something about Backstreet saying they're going on tour because they needed the money. I got reamed, because I'm friends with Nick and I'm friends with all those guys. I got reamed to no end by them more than I did with the one Direction fans, like way more. So the Backstreet Boys fans, even that many years oh, it removed, was the, it was the BSP much more Army. intense. Oh, you suck, you're an ass, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, whole okay. thing, it was crazy. Ready for number three? Yes. All right, so this one is <sighs> El Yucateco, Caribbean Habanero. So this is where Khaled got to and then bailed out basically. Yeah, number three, I mean, whatever on it was. Sriracha, I think in what season? In that season, we might have been just doing like Texas Pete's. Really? And he was like, <laughs> it was All like right, blown so. out, sweating. It was like the saddest, most pathetic thing. You've done a handful of cooking shows. Mm -hmm. You did My Family Recipe Rocks. You did Guy versus Rachel, Celebrity yep. Cook-Off. You hosted one of my favorites, Rewrapped. Mm -hmm. And I wonder with Rewrapped, when you guys take on a Twinkie mm -hmm. and you have the chefs that have to reinvent the Twinkie, right. do you find that, let's say, five chefs make their version of a Twinkie? Are all five of those Twinkies better than an actual Twinkie? Or are they all worse? Than an actual Twinkie. The one that they made? The one that they made. Um, in other words, can you beat one, the classics? The, I don't think no, you can ever beat the classics because it's just that it's that taste, it's that whole thing. And I think a lot of times too, it's not handmade, it's made by a machine in a sense. So everything is precise and it's always gonna have that same quality taste. Are you aware that there's a whole corner of the internet 
that thinks that you and Guy Fieri are doppelgangers. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a couple shows together. We first met actually uh, in uh, Kentucky Derby a couple years. Every time the, the horse races, we'd go, and the first thing he ever came in, he goes, "This one more person calls me Joey Fatone, I'm gonna kick their ass." And I'm like, "Listen, anybody calls me Guy Fieri, I mean, come on, look at you. I mean, come on, really? <laughs> Nobody really. I don't even die. I mean, I dyed my hair, but not my freaking goatee. I don't dye that. But he, we hit it off great, and he's such a great guy. And that's actually how I got Guy versus Rachel. We were talking. It's getting now. <laughs> I just when you breathe in, you're not on a cleanse anymore. No, okay, Joey? no, it's it's gonna be a cleanse <laughs> later on. Don't yeah. worry. That's why you have all black here, so no one just splatters all over the place. Number four, right? Pain is good, Louisiana style. Pain is that's what it's called. That's this what is it's it? good. That's what it's called. Pain is good. It says medium. It's not even hot. It looks like he's either constipated or screaming. I had T.J. Miller on the show, and I asked him this question, but he was kind of mean about it. Stop doing this show. So I want to redo it. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of using this job as a way to workshop my career, and obviously, things could be better. Right. And I admire you because you've hosted so many shows, and right. I'm wondering if you have maybe some advice for us or me personally on ways we can make this thing a little bit better just because we suck. can take, just don't, don't suck. suck. Be honest, that's the fun part. You know, and, don't, and I think a lot of people try to be cheesy about shit, and I think that's what's cool about you is you actually, you give it straight forward. I mean, I've, I've watched you, and so you're straightforward, honest, and, and I think from the first interview when somebody does that, it's, you got to figure and sense them out. A lot of people, a lot of people do interviews. You can sense them out a lot and see what they're feeling. How would you have opened the show? Would you have done something different? Like a little more energy. But the thing is, is but that's your style, and that's you, and that's what makes you you. Because everybody's usually like, "Hey, how's it going? Here to here." Not me. Not you. All right. So number five, Joey, you've come on a historic day. I want everybody to know something. I'm excited. We're moving on up. Hot ones moving now has on up. its own hot sauce. It's made by our boys, Homeboys Hot Sauces out of Phoenix. They're great. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna sell it at Heatnest. That's in Brooklyn. You can buy it online. Hot Ones, it's got a fiery Chipotle base. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying. It is the best damn hot sauce ever made. And Joey, if this sucks, I'll tell, tell you. us it sucks. Oh, I'll tell you it tastes like crap. If it's good, yeah. let us know. And this is it right here, right? And this is the Hot Ones Hot Sauce. All Pick right. it up. Smelling it. A little pineapple cut. Yeah, that's actually pretty damn good. And then it gets, it, like, it, it doesn't takes off a little bit, but not so, much. Right, exactly. Like with hot ones, we're like, let's not make the world's hottest sauce. You know, right. everyone's trying to do that. Let's just make yeah, why? the best hot sauce ever. And I think we made. Yeah, the best no, hot that's sauce. really. I can see that, like, going especially on chicken, but like shrimp and stuff like that. It'll be awesome. Dead Seven, I think it's going to be a hundred times even more talked about than Sharknado <laughs> because the cast is this amazing sort of boy band reunion. Right. And I know that you're friends with a lot of these guys, but sometimes I wonder in the same way that former NBA players get together and instantly bond or right. guys who are astronauts get together and they instantly right. bond because they have this extremely unique world perspective that no one else has. Correct. So I wonder when you're just kicking it with Nick Carter and Jeff Timmons, and it's between <laughs> scenes. What do you guys talk about? What sorts of things do you miss? Anything and everything. Uh, the most time we had actually was a lot of fun. It was, it was, Nick was really busy a lot. He was doing, he was starting to get Gary Dorksy up towards for Dance with the Stars. So it was me, Eric from, uh, from uh, O-Town, Jeff and AJ and Howie really hung out. And the cool thing about them is, we both, we all kind of had stories. There was O-Town, a guy, Eric from O-Town, from O-Town Backstreet and us, we all kind of grew up in the same area in a sense. But it was hilarious, the stories of, like how was the first thing he said to me, he's like, how did you guys really get together? Because I didn't really know and understand the whole process and how this happened. And once that took off, we started asking that, and then we started asking, okay, well, how did this happen with this? And you know, you, thanks to them, they were supposed to do this Disney Channel show that we picked up doing. Five, three, six. And we ended up doing it, and actually, I think that's when it really skyrocketed our career. It really started us. So every time I think, I'm like, Howie, thank you very much. I appreciate you saying <laughs> no to that, because it helped us out. All right, ready for number six? Yes. So going this rogue. one, Rogue. We're going Rogue. It is. Laura Blood Orange Scorpion Pepper Sauce. Yes, High River Rogue. So you finished Runner Up in season four of Dancing with the Stars. And from what I understand about that show is it's like a full-time job where you're just basically in the gym from sun up to sundown, working your ass off that whole time. Well, yeah, you you put whatever you put into it, you get out of it in a sense. I worked, I did four or five hours a day every day. And yeah, this sneaks up on you. It's, it's starting to go a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do a show like that, that is that much of a commitment, 
How bad, how bad does it suck then to finish second? Because like, I almost feel like it's doing this show and doing nine wings. Like I'd almost rather do zero. You know what's even funnier? I, I, I actually liked it that I did it. After I made it to the top three, I was happy. I really was. I genuinely like, of course I wanted to freaking win. But I was generally happy of going, you know what? I made it this far. You can't go any further. Because it's the finale, it's the three right, people. It's the last they show. dance off, you get kicked off, or you win. That's it. So I was like, all right, I made it this far. And it's so funny because after that, I got a lot of jobs from that because people saw my personality. They didn't see me just as a person from NSYNC. So they saw me. You realize I like hot Indian food, so this is okay. Just letting you know. I'm very impressed so far. You gotta say, handling this much better than our average guest. Oh, That's for sure. Well, they're a bunch of vaginas. <laughs> Sorry, Khaled. Khaled? Major key alert right here. Chicken. <laughs> Hot sauce, you wuss. Congratulations, you played yourself. All right, for so number seven, it? which is... Uh, excuse me. Pain 100%. It's getting there. And then this one, we have an eBay roundup. We found a bunch of uh, strange um, NSYNC memorabilia items on eBay. Okay. And so I'm wondering if we can just show you a handful and Please you can do. sort of react to them. All right, yeah. first, we have the suit jacket that your friend Lance wore on the cover of Rolling Stone. $2,200. I never even seen that yeah, on eBay. Ever seen it's this? funny. No, I've seen it. Of course, I was there. <laughs> but it's funny. I think that they had. Yeah, I never. I never knew they were selling it for twenty-two hundred bucks. I hope it's going to charity. We have a full set. Oh, full marionette eh, set. You could find those. Anyway. Three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. Sweet. I, I got a bunch of sets. I'll sell them for three hundred dollars. You could make a. Yeah, you could enterprise, Joey. Right. The ones that are cool though are the real marionettes. We actually had real full-size marionettes. Like, it was like, no joke, that was the first idea that we had it, that's why. And then the, these became toys because it was not affordable for young kids. Are you dreading this? Because you haven't eaten it yet. Oh yeah, I am dreading it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, crap. Okay. Here we go, we have a JT signed fedora. 239 bucks. Oh lord. I got a bunch of these, I can sell them for you. <laughs> Real cheap, I get, I'll give you the five bucks. This is a pretty cool item, it's an Afghan blanket with the whole squad. Oh, it's, it's just, I've seen this, but I've never seen it in person. 50 bucks. Well, I, I would look at the faces. They're kind of weird looking too. So like, at the eyes, right? How about this one? Make this one I'm sure you've seen. This is a poster, you. <sighs> I've seen this, yes. This is when I had some bucks. sort of weird twisty thing. And then the, the Superman symbol was I was funny. gonna ask you about the Superman I symbol. I upgraded it later on, meaning it had diamonds around it and then I got rubies and more diamonds added to it. The same charm. I still have it. Flex. Where Holy is it? Holy cow, that's getting there. Uh, in a uh, safety deposit box. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Not much, but it's, it's getting there. I would say though, of all the people we've had in here, the most impressive performances, in my opinion, have been Coolio, who was right. basically unfazed until he dumped half this bottle out on the last wing just to oh. show off and ended up like, he might be dead. Right. And then, um, Another Miami rapper, Gunplay, was in here and he was just killing the whole set. But you're right up there with those three, I'm telling you right now. I can now. feel it. Don't worry, I'll let you know if it's really that bad and I'll, I'll, I'll kill myself on that. So this one is the bomb, 24 times hotter than a jalapeno. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. This is the stupidest thing ever. I'm a dumber show. Yep, but it's great. So on paper, being in a group like NSYNC sounds like heaven on earth. <laughs> but no matter the group, there always seems to be a little... <laughs> <laughs> there always be, seems to be some discontent. You know, it doesn't matter the group. This is not an NSYNC specific right. thing. There always seems to be. Which makes me wonder, like, what is the worst thing about being young and famous and having the world by the ball? Um, being frivolous and stupid with, with your money and what your power. And thank God that we've never had that moment, in a sense. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, uh, that's why it's so hard because you, you're focused on that. You can't even answer the damn questions. Right. Um, what were we saying? <laughs> What's the, what would be like the worst thing? Like everybody thinks um, it's the you know what? best we all, thing ever. We all keep, we... We all keep our, our, ourselves in check. I think the worst thing ever just in general is, is the constant, man, the constant, um, <laughs> I can't even talk. Yeah, that one's good. Uh, the, rep the, the repetition of everything, and you get you just get tired and get fed up with it. It's a vicious cycle. As we'll go on tour, we'll go out there. Say for instance, three o'clock, we you know start sound check or whatever. We do so. We get there at noon. We start sound check. Get there at noon. Do the whole thing. Meet people. Do interviews. Get done. Do the show at seven o'clock or eight or whatever. 
uh, would get done around maybe 11, 11.30, get on the bus and drive to the next city and do it over and over and over again. When that's done, then we do the videos or we re-record stuff. That one just bites your ass, wow. So, number nine, Mad Dog 357. Never a, a pleasurable one. <laughs> so, I would, yeah, look, I would not try. To, why is all that? On I would here? not try to clean this one. So to I'm go along with that. There, you took that one. What happened? Did you see the bite? Seriously, did you all see the little wussy bite he just took into it? Meanwhile, how about Joey Fatone snitching? How many at me? times did you do it? So many times. Look, it's gonna hurt. I'm not denying it. All right. <clears throat> Everybody just turned their head away when I took a bite out because they know what's happening. <laughs> then going along with that, like, what was your mindset like with the day that NSYNC stopped? Were you upset? Were you sad? Were you relieved? Like, what was that uh, day like? Uh, uh, fiery burning right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it a more painful day than today? Yes. You know, it was sad at first, but it was, I think it was a good thing that that happened. What happens? Why does that happen when you start talking? It's Shoot. like it's like time release, like yeah. it knows. Um, yeah, I mean, it was like one of those things, but I was like, you know what? Now I got a chance to do whatever I always wanted to do. And I did Broadway, I did Rent, which was fun, which was a blast. You know, I had such a great time doing it. And, and to be able to do other things and open up other doors for me, it was great. Oh. <sighs> All right, last one. Does it ever get old? It is old. It is old. This show is old. <laughs> But this whole like, thing is old. But it's like a new thing every... Wow. It's a new experience. It's it's, a, it's always the same experience, but it's always a it's shitty experience. Right. Last one. It's kind of traditional. Yeah, let's get it over. Dab the last wing. Is that what you do? Wow, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The drop's right there. Here we go. As we talked about earlier, very impressive that you were able to get through that whole era without having any big beefs, <laughs> without having any big beefs with 98 Degrees or Backstreet Boys or O-Town or any of those guys. Right. But one guy who went after you guys kind of hard is Eminem, and he went after Chris Kirkpatrick personally. Chris Kirkpatrick, you can get your ass kicked worse than them little limp biscuit bastards. And I've always wondered, have you ever met him? Have you ever talked to him? Uh, if so, what was that like? If you haven't met him, did you guys ever get together and were like, whoa, what the hell is this guy's problem with us? We met him, he's always like, so, never said anything really. I think Chris might have talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, th now I know why the questions, because when you breathe and talk out, it kills. <sighs> Chris talked to Eminem? <sighs> I think he did. And you know, it was all, it's all, you no, know, it's all persona. It's all about having that fun with that. I don't think he really like meant it. Like, he oh, didn't shit. see you guys on a red carpet. Oh my God. I was like, I got some stuff I gotta get off my chest. No, he wasn't like me. He was just writing stuff. I'm taking this water. But did I take all, did I drink two or three? I don't remember. Yeah, that one's you, but we have reserves. Did uh, Chris, oh, look how many sips of milk I've taken. Uh -huh. Clearing like three cups of water. What about Chris? What was he thinking at that time? He, when he got it. He got dropped. Look at that. No, his name was on it. I love it. What were you thinking when he was in, doing all that stuff? Just he's making music or what? Yeah, what, whatever rhymes with ass kicked. Chris Kirkpatrick, <laughs> I'm gonna get your ass. I guess it's the only thing he came up with. It, is a, it is a good line, it does flow. <sighs> oh. All right, Joey Fatone. Yes, sir. Heavyweight champ coming in, oh, clearing oh, wings. Oh my God. Killed him. The floor is yours. You got 30 seconds. Tell the people to see your right movies. Here. Wherever you want, the floor is yours, man. Go see my Big Fat Greek Wedding too. It's hotter than this. Uh, and then also, oh my God, my eyes are tearing. Dead 7, April 1st on Sci-Fi. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be a good time. Just like this, it was amazing. And you'll enjoy it, go see it. Exposure. I was always a big fan of the 11s, yeah. but uh, you know anything. Thought about being smart. You gotta be quick. Sorry, we don't know you. I don't want you to do this. That's why I do it. Hey, come man. Uh, Can we put weed on a piece of two? On it to get me to the level where I only settle for the raws. The floors that makes it floor.